Bernie Sanders, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bill O'Reilly, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for your host. One thing I love about Bill O'Reilly is that he never loses custody of his children. I mean his sense of humor. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's so good to be addressing the American people again. Uh, before I get too far into my set, I want to I wanna make something very clear. Uh, my accent is going to, to uh, fluctuate wildly uh, uh, b between, uh, between Al Pacino in the movie Heat and the principal from Beavis and Butthead. But that's fine. That's okay. Um, I, I, I've gotta, I gotta admit, it was, uh, it was a little hard to accept uh, that I was not uh, the final nominee uh, for the Democratic candidacy for president. Uh, but uh, whenever I go through hard times, I like to remember something that my close personal friend, Martin Luther King Jr. said to me uh, when we were sharing a jail cell together in Birmingham, Alabama. I'll never forget. He looked right at me and he said, Kanye West is actually pretty annoying. Don't tell any white people I said that. <laughs> and it brings a tear to my eye to this day. But you know, maybe that's my fault. Maybe I uh, should have played the game a little more. Uh, I never sucked up to uh, Wall Street, to the big business fat cats. Uh, funny story, the other day, I was walking down the street, minding my own business, and the CEO of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, angrily masturbated directly at me, just right at me. <laughs> you know how hard it is to get entrepreneur jism out of a JC Penny suit. It's very difficult, very difficult. But, um, but what a tremendous dais we have assembled here. Uh, Ted Cruz is here, ladies and gentlemen. Ted Cruz. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. I, um, I was led to believe by every television broadcast ever that Ted Cruz did not look like the wacky dad from an Al Jazeera sitcom. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to my jokes out that's uh it's gonna affect my set uh god but remember 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 the good old days remember when uh we found out that ted cruz bought a whole bunch of soup on his wedding day just like a hundred cans of soup and then we were all like eh, that's probably about as weird as this election's gonna get remember that <laughs> yeah those were good times how is this booger tooth jizz mop the best thing the republican establishment could throw at donald trump how is that Ted, Ted Cruz, Chris Christie, Jeb Bush, are you against gay marriage and having a chin? What the fuck's happening? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, uh, Michelle Obama is here, ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Obama. I tell you, there, this woman, her, her and her family have, have faced so much adversity and she has handled it with so much dignity and grace. I, I, it's truly inspiring and I, I wanna share something with you uh, because I know uh, it's just gonna get more difficult uh, as, as uh, your husband's presidency expires. And I, I wanna share with you uh, some words that uh, Rosa Parks shared to me. Uh, <laughs> as we were, as we, were eating, uh, we were in a sushi restaurant in uh, Sarasota, Florida. <laughs> and I'll never forget, she looked right at me and she said, submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I call this story the tale of the phone police. And that's as true today as it was then. That was for five people. Because it totally makes sense for Bernie Sanders to make snick references. Um, uh, uh, Trump's wife, Matador Labia Trump is here. It's good to see you. Uh, truly, you know, Matador Labia Trump, she is truly the Corey Feldman of this election. You know what I mean? <laughs> You gotta laugh, because if you don't, it's super depressing. Uh, I want to thank Vladimir Putin for wearing a shirt tonight, because you're in your goddamn 60s, what the fuck? Vladimir Putin, this whole weird frenemy relationship you and Donald have, it's so weird. Oh, I don't know him, always my best friend, oh, we've never met. Putin and Trump are basically like Blair and Serena from Gossip Girl. <laughs> You know, Trump gets mad that Putin slept with Nate, even though Nate was dating Trump at the time, so Trump sabotages Putin's application to Columbia University. But then later, when, when Putin's mother has Putin involuntarily committed to a rehab center because Putin overdosed on pills, but then it turned out Putin didn't actually take those pills on purpose. It was Juliet Sharp who drugged Putin to get revenge on Putin's mother for the time she had Juliet's brother locked up for statutory rape, who had Putin's back Donald Trump. 
You see, Hillary, that's how you court the youth vote. You have to give a shit about the wacky bullshit that millennials care about, like Gossip Girl and hip hop music and a living wage. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, you look fantastic. You look, I'll, I'll let the cat in the hat know one of the things escaped. Look at you. <laughs> you goodwill Starfleet captain motherfucker, you. Look, I think Hillary is tremendously qualified to be president. It's just a shame that she has the likability of an abandoned Walden books. I think I was pretty likable. Remember the time I befriended a bird? Just mid-speech, I befriended a bird? Yeah. Hillary couldn't befriend a bird if she douched with earthworms. That's a fact. But, uh... By the way, again, I'm not, I'm not super up on pop culture, but I was not aware Paula Poundstone was the lead singer of Talking Heads. That is news to me. In all serious note, I think if one thing disqualifies Donald Trump from the presidency, it is his ongoing war with Rosie O'Donnell. It really is. Not because it's so misogynistic, but because he's spending time giving a fuck about Rosie O'Donnell. What is that about? What are you gonna be, uh, gonna be late for a state dinner because you got Twitter beef with Nelly Furtado? What are you doing? <laughs> Oh, I'd love to come to the Israeli-Palestinian peace talks, but Jennifer Love Hewitt just called me a tangerine rape clown on Facebook, so I gotta deal with that. Is Eagle Eye Cherry gonna come out and do a tight five? What the fuck? How the fuck are you at war with the past and the future? How is that possible? <laughs> Donald, I wanna say something to you, because I feel like it will mean more coming from me. Your hair is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> It looks like the great Gatsby's pubes up there. You're like prep school Star Fox. I don't know what the fuck you're trying to get away with. It's like one guy, good, very good. You're like if the movie The Devil's Advocate was a person. I mean, I know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but if I'm at the library and I pick out a book and it says what Hitler jerks off to on the cover, I'm gonna put it back on the fucking shelf. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I understand that you find Donald, for many of you, you find Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton both equally reprehensible choices for the presidency. I understand that, but I want to urge you not to get disgruntled, and if you can't make, uh, you can't find a way to vote for either candidate, consider an alternative. Vote for a third party candidate, like Gary Johnson. But that's enough hilarious jokes for me. I want to close. <laughs> by saying that America is as divided as it's ever been. But I'm hoping that uh, after this election, we can reconcile and come back together as a nation. And I'm reminded of something that Frederick Douglass once said to me <laughs> when we were playing Hungry Hungry Hippos on the roof of a Krispy Kreme. He said to me, I know something you don't know. And I got something to tell you. Wouldn't believe how many people straight doubted the flow. Most said that I was a failure. And now the same motherfucker's asking me for dough, and I'm yelling, I can't help you. Hey, Nelly, can we get tickets to the next show? Hell no, you for real. God bless you and God bless America. Thank you very much. Bernie Sanders, everybody.